This is the OCI GCC 91 Maths Paper 3 from the Foundation tier and it's from the November 2019 series and it's a calculator paper. Question number one. Here are some types of numbers. We've got an even number, an odd number, a prime number, a square number and a cube number and from the list we have to write down the type of number being described. For the first part we have a number that does not divide exactly by 2. Well here we have an odd number. And then for the second part, a number that has no factors except itself and 1. Well here we have a, a prime number. And now for the first part of part b, we have to write down all the multiples of 4 between 21 and 29. Well, first of all, a multiple of 4, we're looking for numbers in the 4 times tables. And the numbers that are multiples of 4 between 21 and 29, we would have 24 and 28. And then for the second part of part B, we have to write down a common multiple of 4 and 6. Well, we can choose any number which goes into both, rather we can choose any number which is both a multiple of 4 and 6, for example we could have 12, because 4 and 6 go into 12. And now for part C, we have to insert brackets to make this calculation correct. Well, we've got 4 take 1 times 2 equals 6. Now we know already that 3 times by 2 gives us 6 and therefore what you can see here, because we have a times 2, of course 4 take away 1 is the same as 3. So the brackets go here. And then for part D we have to write 7% as a fraction. Well percentage means out of 100. And what we have is 7 out of 100. Question number 2. We have to work out 1.52 kilograms plus 80 grams and we have to give our answer in kilograms. Well if we have to give our answer in kilograms it makes sense for us to convert this grams into kilograms. To go from grams to kilograms we'd have to divide by 1000 and to go from kilograms to grams we'd have to times by 1000. So what we can do is divide this 80 by 1000 to convert this into kilograms. So if we do that 80 divided by 1000 that's 0.08 so 80 grams is the same as 0.08 kilograms and therefore what we have then is 1.52 plus 0.08 so if we add these together we get 1.6 so we have 1.6 kilograms Question number 3 for part here we have to round 32,629 to the nearest thousand. Well if we take a look at the digit after the thousands column which is this 6 you can see that this is greater than 5 and therefore we'd have to move this up to the next digit so we'd have 33 thousand and then rounding 32,629 to one significant figure well if we take a look at the 2 over here you can see this is less than 5 and therefore we don't need to round this 3 up so therefore we'd have 30,000 Question number 
for a circle has radius 5 centimeters and we have to work out the circumference of the circle well to work out the circumference of a circle this is worked out by multiplying 2 by pi by the radius so we've got 2 times by pi times by the radius which is 5 so here we'd have 10 pi so therefore if we actually work out what 10 pi is you'd find we get as a decimal 31.4 given to one decimal place and now for part b we have to work out the area of the circle well to work out the area of a circle this is found by multiplying pi by the radius squared so we have pi lots of 5 squared which is 25 pi so we've got 25 pi which as a decimal equivalent we've got 78.5 given to one decimal place question number five dan thinks of a number he adds three and divides the result by two his answer is 16 what number is Dan thinking of? Well, if we let this number equal x, then what we're doing is we're adding 3 to this number first of all. So we've got x plus 3. And then we divide this number by 2. The result of this is 16. And if we multiply both sides by 2, we have x plus 3 equals 16 times by 2 which is 32 and therefore if we subtract 3 from both sides 32 th take away 3 that's 29 and therefore the number Dan is thinking of is 29 question number 6 30 students each own one pet the pie chart shows the proportion of each type of pet owned by 30 students and for part A, we have to find which type of pet is the mode. Well, first of all, let's find this missing angle for the dog. We've got 360 degrees. Take away 72 for horse. Take away 36 for rabbit. Take away 24 for mouse. Take away 144 for cats. It turns out here for dogs, we would have an angle of 84 degrees so you can see the largest angle will correspond to the mode because the mode means the most common and therefore for the most common type of pet we would have a cat and now for part b we have to use the information in the pie chart to complete this bar chart well we have a number of students and we've got the type of pet. Now, what we need to do is find out the number of students for each pet. And what we can do is work out the angle divided by 360 and times it, this by 30 tells us how much of each type of pet we have. So first of all, for dog, we've got 84 divided by 360 times 30, here we'd have 7 for dog. So if we go back to our bar chart, we've got 7 for dog, so if we draw this on, draw a vertical line up to 7, and then finish it off. We've got here information for dogs. And if we take a look at mouse, what we'd have is 24 divided by 360 times 30. So here we've got 2 for mouse. So if we go to mouse and draw on line to 2, like so, here is information for mouse. And if we take a look at horse, horse we've got 72. So let's change this angle to 72 
So here we'd have 6 for Hoss. So if we draw that on, we've got 6 for Hoss, as we see here. So here is our completed bar chart. Question number seven. Jenny has a five-sided biased spinner. The sectors are colored red, blue, green, yellow, and white. She spins the spinner 100 times. The table shows the number of times the spinner lands on each color. So we've got the color and the frequency. And Jenny uses her data to estimate the probability that the spinner estimate the probability of the spinner landing on each colour and we have to write down Jenny's estimate for the probability of landing on a red. Well we're spinning 100 times, we get 28 red times and therefore the probability of getting red that will be given by 28 over 100 and if we work this out 28 over 100 that's 7 over 25. So what we'd have over here then is 7 over 25. And now for part B, Jenny then writes in some of the colours on this probability scale. And for the first part, we have to write down the correct colour in this box. Well, what we have over here is if we look at yellow, that's impossible. And if we have 50 of a colour, that will be evens. So the closest number that's to 50 is this 38. So that will be closer to evens, and that will correspond to blue. And therefore, we'd have blue in this box. And then for the next part, we have to explain why Jenny's estimate for the probability of landing on yellow cannot be the actual probability. Well, for definite, we do have a yellow on our spinner. Now, even though we got a frequency of zero for yellow, this does not mean that the probability of getting a yellow is actually zero. So what we can put over here is yellow is a colour on the spinner and so therefore it is a possible outcome. Question number eight. Shape G is drawn on a grid and what we have to do is rotate shape G by 180 degrees about the point A. Well, one way we can do this is, if we consider this point, from here to here, we've got one unit up, so in the opposite direction, we'd have the corresponding point here. And if we consider this over here, we're going two across one up, so if we rotate by 180 degrees, we'd have two this way and one down. So here is the corresponding point for this point. And if we consider this point, we have three across three up, so in the opposite direction, we've got three across and three down. And if we consider this point, we've got one across three up, so we go one this way and three down here. And so if we join all of this up, like so, then here is our rotated shape. And then for part B, shape H is drawn on the grid, and we have to enlarge shape H with a scale factor 2 and the center of enlargement at the point B. So if we consider this point over here, from here to here we've got one across, rather we've got one across and two down. So if we stretch by scale factor 2 we want to go four down and two across. So that's for this corresponding point. From here to the point on this trapezium, we've got zero across and zero up. So then this point will remain invariant, it will remain fixed. And if we consider this point, well, we're going zero up and we're going three across. So enlarging that by scale factor three, we need to go six across like this. 
And then, if we consider this point, well, we're going here, two down and two across. So then we go four down and four across. We'll have the corresponding point over here. And then joining everything up as necessary, what we'd end up with is, well, we join this to this. We join this to this. And then we join this to this. And then we join this to this. So then we've enlarged shape H by scale factor 2 with the center of enlargement at B. Question number 9. Tom buys a radio for £40. Later he sells it and makes a profit of 20%. Tom says the ratio of the price I paid for the radio to the price I sold it for is 5 to 6. We have to show that Tom is correct. Well, if he makes a profit of 20%, he would sell the radio for 40 times by 1.2. So this 1.2 comes from the fact that we make a 20% profit. So here we get 48. So his selling price is 48. He buys it for 40. So therefore, we've got the ratio of his paid price to the sold price equaling 40 to 48. And we have to show that this is the same as 5 to 6. Well, it is because if I divide both sides by 8, then 40 divided by 8 is 5 and 48 divided by 8, that's 6. So indeed we do get 5 to 6 and that's exactly what we wanted to show. Question number 10. Nada is, pain, is planning the colour scheme for her bedroom. The colour of her carpet can be blue, grey or red. The walls can be painted yellow, white or pink. We have to complete the table to show all the possible combinations she can make. You may not need all the rows. Well, we can have blue and yellow for the carpet and walls. We could have blue and then white. Or we can have blue and then pink. Or we can have grey carpet with yellow walls. Grey with white. Or grey with pink. Or we can have red with yellow, red with white, or red with pink. So here are the different combinations we can have. And now for part B, we have to explain why it would not be mathematically correct to find the probability that another decides on a grey carpet and pink walls using this formula, one over the total number of combinations. Well. Over here, we have something which is not a random choice. Question number 11, we have to multiply out for part A, 3 lots of x minus 2. Well here we've got 3 times by x which is 3x, and then we've got 3 times by minus 2 which is minus 6, and therefore we'd have 3x minus 6. Now for part B we've got 2a lots of a plus b. Well, 2a times by a, that's 2a squared. And 2a times by b, that's 2ab. So we add on 2ab. For question 12, for part a, we have to find the value of, for the first part, the cube root of 216. So if we enter this into our calculator, we've got the cube root of 216, which is 6. And then for the next part, we've got 2 to the 8. So typing this into our calculator, we get 256. Now for part B, the cube of 3 is added to the square root of 7. We have to put a ring around the correct statement. Well, we're cubing 3, so then we'd have a 3 cubed. And then we're adding on the square root of 7. So here is the correct statement. Question number 13. 
The midpoints of the sides of a rectangle are joined by straight lines as we see here and we have to work out the percentage of the rectangle that is shaded. Well, what we can do is split this up as follows. Using the midpoints, we have something like this. And what you can see over here is we've got four parts in total. And therefore, if we consider what's shaded, well, what we'll do as well is we'll split this up even further as triangles, as we see here. That might help us out even further. So, what you can see is we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts in total. So we've got eight parts in total, and of those which are shaded, well, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got six eighths which are shaded, and of course, we're going to times this by 100. So we've got three quarters times by 100, which is 75. So we've got 75% which is shaded. Question number 14. Three lines meet at the point A, and we have to work out the size of angle A. Well, angles are around a point equal 360, so we have A plus 103 plus 100 equals 360. So now let's tidy this up. What we can do is find out what A is. A is equal to 360, take away the 100, take away the 103, which is 157. So A is equal to 157. And now for part B, X, Y and C, W are parallel lines and AB is equal to CB, we have to, well, we're also given that CAX is 130 degrees, we have to complete this sentence. Well, the angle CAB is 50 degrees, so that's this angle here. And the reason for this, well, we know that angles on a straight line add up to 180. So we'd have over here, would have angles on a straight line adding up to 180. And now we have to work out the size of the angle BCW, which is this angle here. Well, over here, this angle over here, the angle WCA, that's equal to the 130 degrees that we see over here. And the reason for this is we have co-interior angles which sum to 180. So we've got 50 plus 130 gives us 180. And because this is 130, this angle is the same as this angle here. Now we have to find the angle BCW, which is this angle here. Well, this angle over here is equal to this angle here because we've got a the base angles in an isosceles which are equal. So the angle BCA is equal to 50 degrees because the base angles in an isosceles are equal. So therefore for this angle over here, what we'd have then for the angle BCW, that will equal 130, take away the 50, which is equal to 80. So we have 80 degrees for that particular angle. Question number 15. Ryan shoots an arrow at a target. He then kicks a ball at a goal. The probability that Ryan hits the target is two thirds and the probability that Ryan scores a goal is three fifths. You have to complete this tree diagram. Well, if the probability that he scores a goal is three fifths, we add on the three-fifths here and also here. Now, the probability that he misses will be one-third. That's one take with the two-thirds. And the probability that he does not score, that will be two-fifths. One take with three-fifths is, of course, two-fifths. So here we have completed the tree diagram. And now for the first part of part B, 
We have to find the probability that Ryan misses the target and does not score a goal. So he misses. Okay, so he misses. And then he does not score. So misses and does not score. We'd have over here one third times by the two fifths which is 2 over 15. So we have 2 over 15. And then we're looking at, for the next part, the probability that he hits the target or scores a goal or both. Okay, so the probability that he hits the target and scores or he misses and does not score, rather he misses and then scores. Well, all we have to do here is, if we think about the wording of the question, he hits the target or he scores a goal or he gets both. So you can score both, hit and score, or you can hit and not score, or you can miss and then score. So therefore, this over here is the same as the probability of miss the target and not scoring. So that's equal to one takeaway, two over 15, which is 13 over 15. So we would have here 13 over 15. Question number 16. We have to solve the simultaneous equations 2x minus y equals 7 and 2x plus y equals 5. Well here you can see the y's are the same but we've got opposite signs and therefore adding the equations 2x plus 2x that's 4x minus y plus y is 0y and 7 plus 5 that's 12. So 4x is 12 x is equal to 3. And when x is equal to 3, we'd have two lots of 3 plus y equals 5. So we've got 6 plus y equals 5. y is equal to minus 1. So we've got x equals 3, y equals minus 1. Question number 17. Two model cars A and B are in a race. They start together on the starting line, assume each car travels at a constant speed. Car A takes 30 seconds to complete each lap of the truck. Car B takes a whole number of seconds to complete each lap of the truck. The two cars next cross the starting line together 150 seconds after the start of the race. We have to find four possible times that car B could take to complete one lap. You may find this information helpful. We've got 150, which is equal to 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. Rather, 2 times 3 times 5 times 5. And 30 equals 2 times 3 times 5. Well, what we'll do to begin with is we will let car B take x seconds. Now, the idea is over here, the, the lowest common multiple of 30 and this number x is 150. How does this help us? Well, the reason that we're considering the lowest common multiple is because we're considering the time the next start together, which is 150 seconds after the start of the race. So, one way we can do this is, well, we've got here car A. We've got here 30 seconds and then that's after the first lap, after the second we've got 60, after the third we've got 90, after the fourth lap we've got 120 and after the fifth lap we've got 150. So lap A has taken 5, car A has taken 5 laps. Now what we could have for car B, So we, if we consider car B, well, 
car B could just take 150 seconds, and therefore what you'd find here is whilst car B takes one lap, car A will take five laps. That's one possibility. Or one other possibility is we could have car B taking 25 seconds per lap, and if that's the case, we've got 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, and 150. So this is another possibility. Car B taking 25 seconds and therefore completing six laps by the time they next meet. Another possibility is car B could take 50 seconds to go around the lap once and therefore if that's the case we've got 50, 100 and 150 so then they meet when car A has done 5 laps and car B has done 3 laps and another possibility well Car B could take 75 seconds, so by the time car B does two laps, car A would have done five laps. So we've got four different possibilities here. We could either have the 25, 50, 75, or 150. So we thought about this just based upon simple logic. For question number 18, part A, we have to write down the multiplier for an increase of 140%. Give your answer as a decimal. Well, we've got the original 100%, and if we're increasing by 140%, adding 140 to 100, we get 240%. So therefore, this as a, multi as, this as a decimal multiplier is 2.4. Now for part B, Ali invests £1,500 in October, the investment increases in value by 10% in November, it then decreases in value by 20% in December, Ali says 10% take away 20% is minus 10%, so the £1,500 has lost exactly 10% of its value, explain what Ali has done wrong. Well, over here, the percentages are not of the same amount. And then for the next part, we have to work out the correct percentage loss. Well, what's happening is we've got our original and the, what we'll do is we've got our 1500, our original, and then the investment increases by 10% in November. So we multiply by 1.1. So this corresponds to the increase in 10%. And then it decreases by 20%, so then we multiply by 0 0.8. So this corresponds to the decrease in 20%. So if we work all of this out, we've got 1500 times 1 1.1 times 0 0.8, which is 1320. Okay, so how does this help us? Well, what we can now do is work out our percentage loss. We have 1500 take away 1320 divided by 1500, and then we're timing this by 100. So we've got 1500 take away. 1320 and then time and then dividing this by 1500 and then timesing it by 100 we get 12 percent so we've got 12 percent for the percentage loss question number 19 we have to solve 3x minus 5 being greater or equal to 10 show your solution on a number line well adding 5 to both sides you'd find 3x to be greater or equal to 15 and dividing both sides by 3 you'd find x to be greater or equal to 5. How does this help us? Well if we've got the 5 over here 
we of course shade in because we've got a weak inequality symbol and we want x to be greater or equal to 5 so we would have something looking like this as our correct answer. Question number 20. Amit's income is 32% more than Bethan's income. Amit's and Bethan's income combined is £54,864. We have to calculate Amrit's income. Well, we begin by letting Bethan's income equal x. And if we do that, then we have x plus, well, if we've got an increase of 32%, we've got 1.32x. And this is equal to 54860, rather 868. So we've got 2.32x equaling 54868. And therefore, we can find out what x is. So we've got 3, rather, we've got 54868 divided by 2.32, which is 23650. So this here is Bethan's income. And therefore, for, for Amrit's income, we would have 23650 times by 1.32. So if I times this by 1.32, we get 31218. So this here is Amrit's income. And the reason we multiply by 1.32 is because of this statement over here. Question number 21. Jacob... Emily and Reuben each roll a fair six-sided dice. What is the probability that all three roll a number that is less than three? Well, over here, the probability that we roll a number less than three, well, let's think about our different outcomes. We could have a one, two, three, four, five, and six. And what you'd find here is there are two numbers which are less than three. So the probability that we have less than 3, that's equal to 2 over 6, which is 1 third. And if each of these are rolling this dice, therefore what we'd have is the probability that all three have something less than 3, that's equal to 1 third times 1 third times one third which is one over 27 so we've got one over 27 question number 22 the diagram shows two rectangles a and b so we've got rectangle a here and rectangle b and rectangle a has a width of 25 centimeters and a height of 12 centimeters the width of rectangle b is three times the height of rectangle b the area of rectangle A is equal to the area of rectangle B. We have to find the perimeter of rectangle B. Well, what we'll do is we'll let the height over here equal x. And we were told that the width is 3 times the height. So here, we'd have 3x. So this comes from the fact that we've got 3 times the height of B. Now, the area of A, that's equal to 12 times by 25. And if we work this out, 12 times 25, that's 300. So the area of A is equal to 300 centimetres squared. And the area of B, that's equal to 3x squared. And if we set those equal to each other, we have 3x squared equaling 300. And the reason we set these equal to each other is because the area of A is equal to the area of B. And if we divide both sides by 3, we'd have x squared equals 100. So therefore, x is equal to the square root of 100, which is 10. And what we now have to do is find the perimeter of B. Well, if here, 
x is 10, then here we've got 10, here we'd have 30, here we'd have 10, and here we'd also have 30. So for the perimeter, the perimeter is equal to 2 times by 10 plus 2 times by 30. So the perimeter is 80 centimetres. Question number 23. K invests £1,500 in an account paying 3% compound interest per year. Neil invests £1,500 in an account by paying R% simple interest per year. At the end of the fifth year, K and Neil's account both contain the same amount of money. We have to calculate R. So if we consider the situation for K, we have here 1500 multiplied by 1.03 to the power of 5. So if we work this out, we've got 1500 times 1 1.03 to the power of 5, which is 1738.911, etc. We'll start this into our calculator. So this is how much he has after five years. And if we consider the situation for Neil, well, he's investing R% simple interest per year. So, per year, the interest, that's given by R% of 1500. So, R% that's the same as R over 100. So we've got R over 100 times by 1500. So here, 1500 divided by 100, that's 15. So here, we've got 15R. So this is the amount of money he has per year. And therefore, after five years, the interest would be 5 times by 15R, so if we work this out, we get 75. So he has 75R pounds after 5 years, so this is the interest after 5 years. And what we need to do is add this on to the 1500. So the total amount of money he has is 1500 plus 75R, and he gets this 17 38.911, etc. So what we'll do is we'll do that value that we had before, and then what we'll do is we'll take away the 1500, so we've got this value, um, we'll type it in again, so we've got 1500 times by 1 1.03 to the power of 5. So, if I take away 1500 from this, we get 75R equals 238.91, etc. And if I divide this by 75, we can see that R is equal to 3.185, etc. So, if we give our answer to one decimal place, you'd find r to equal 3.2 to 1 decimal place. Question number 24. In this question, all lengths are in centimetres. We've got a square over here. We've got lengths 6a plus b minus 1, and we've got 4a plus 2b. And what we have to do is find the length of one side of the square when b equals 4. Well, you can see here that when b equals 4, we've got 4a plus 2 lots of 4, so we've got 4a plus 2 times by 4, which is 8. And here we've got 6a plus 4 minus 1, so we've got 6a plus 3. So how does this help us? Well, what we can do is set these equal to each other because each side of the square has the same length. So we've got 4a plus 8 equals 6a plus 3. So therefore you can see 
2a is equal to 5 and therefore a is equal to 2.5. So with a equaling 2.5, that means the length that's equal to 4 lots of 2.5 plus the 8, which is 18, because we've got 10 plus 8, which is 18. So therefore we have 18 centimetres for the side of one square rather the the length of uh, one square being um, 18 with these conditions so that's the end of the paper don't forget to like share and subscribe any questions do feel free to comment them in the comment section below and hopefully i'll see you on the next video